here we oh, here we are with uh, uh, continuing our structural analysis course and here we're talking about beam deflections using the conjugate beam method there are two major theorems in, in the in the conjugate beam method the first is that the slope at a point in the real beam in the real beam is equal to the slope at I'm sorry is equal to the shear at that point in the conjugate beam, okay? And it's, of course, it's like, what the hell is a conjugate beam, right? It's just, it's like alternative beam, okay? So the analogy I'm gonna use later is like the real beam and bizarro beam, like real Superman and bizarro Superman. Seriously, okay? And then say, this other theorem, also this is by Mueller-Breslau, is that the displacement at a point in the real beam, the displacement at a point in the real beam is equal to the moment at that point in the conjugate beam. Okay, in the con is equal to the moment. And so, you know, this was by Mueller Breslau, the same dudes who did the, the influence line stuff, right? And what they're trying to do here is they, they did by observation. They said that, well, first and foremost, the the value of the conjugate beam method is that you can calculate deflections, okay, using statics essentially using static principles, statics, on the conjugate beam. That's the advantage. So you don't have to learn some new complex theorem. You know, everything you've learned in statics applies. It's just you have to be able to, to create this. Now, the idea behind this is, so in the shear and moment diagrams, in the shear and moment diagrams, shear and moment diagrams, you have to just remember what the relationship was between shear and the, the distributed loading. And the idea was that the slope of the shear diagram is equal to the distributed load. Okay, so that was one relationship. The other relationship was that the, um, the, slope, of the, uh, the slope of the moment diagram is equal to shear, right? It's equal to the value of the shear. And if I substitute you know, here, substitute this into this right here, then I would get d squared m over dx squared equals w also. Okay, so we have this analogy. And now if I, if I get rid of this right here, what, what Mueller and Breslau observed is that, hey, okay, what, th what they found was that, hey, um, what the hell did my notes say? They say that the, the curvature, the curvature of a beam, right? We said was uh, uh, the curvature of a beam before moment curvature relationship. They found that this, this d squared m over dx squared equals w look like the moment curvature relationship, m over ei, okay? So the second derivative of displacement was the curvature right here. And, the fr and, and then, and even the first derivative of curvature, or slope, the first derivative of slope is equal to also m over ei. And what they saw were the similarities here, okay? And what these similarities say, watch this, check this out right here. What these similarities say is that the slope, the slope here, the slope is equal to the integral m over ei times dx, okay? But m dx, the integral of moment, right? The integral of moment, look from over here, I said dv dx equals, uh, oops, blah, 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 blah. Uh, this dm is equal to v dx, yeah? Okay, shoot, I don't know if, I, if I'm getting this right or not, but basically what this says is that the the integral of the moment is the same thing as the shear. Does that look like shear to you? The area under the moment function is the shear. No. That's backwards. Fudge. WTF, right? Frick. Oh, frick. Yeah, duh. Uh. Ah, okay, 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 forget, forget, forget that, forget that, forget that, okay. So, so what they said here is, okay, what they said here is that when I look at this first relationship right here, 
this first relationship right there, okay, the the shear the shear is equal to W D X, okay, and this is analogous. Is that the symbol for analogous? I don't know. Comparable, analogous. Who cares, right? To d theta m over e i d x like this right here, and then they said they looked at this relationship right here like this and said that hey, you know the second this uh, uh, the moment is equal to the second or double integral right of the distribute of some something right here like the loading and this is the same as the displacement this would have been theta the displacement is equal to this integral m over ei times dx dx so what they're saying is that if i can treat the moment the moment the curvature really this m over ei is a curvature if I can treat the curvature like a loading, okay? If I can treat the curvature like a loading, then I can use statics to get the displacement and the slope. Okay? All right. So, so what they said is, ah, there is a conjugate universe or a world where I can take my real beam and translate it into this this kind of deal with the curvature loading if you will and and using just statics calculate the deflections and the slopes so the process okay the process for the conjugate beam method is as follows first is to draw the moment diagram usually moment diagram okay then modify it with EI to get the curvature diagram right here okay then you take the real beam and you draw a real beam and you translate it into the conjugate beam Three, and then you apply the curvature diagram as the conjugate loading Conj curvature diagram as conjugate beam loading yeah okay and then and then you use use statics to calculate the load or internal really it's the internal load internal load or reaction okay at location of interest and really when I say internal load or reaction I gotta put quotes on around it because it's the conjugate beam that we're talking about at location of interest for the conjugate beam conjugate beam. 